Hello, my name is Lila Sanchez, and this is my GPE 205 Project Milestone 1 overview. I would like to start by showing the Tink model in the game. So that is in my Assets Art folder, and it's right there. It is a FBX. The UA Tank is just a FBX file. I also imported a few other assets in my imports folder here from various sources. I have two scenes I use to get to a completed point, main and testing scenes. Those are here in my scenes folder. And currently we have the testing scene open. This is a duck that I imported over and I gave it collision and rigid body to ensure that it would have physics in my game. And I also made it a part of the players layer and I'll explain why later on. To look at my main scene, all right. I have the game manager right here named game manager and it is currently running my game manager script that I created. And on this script, I used it to instantiate the player controller and its pawn. This is my game manager script and it also holds a list that is updated on the player controller script under the public override void start and on public void destroy functions. Let me show you that. This is my player controller script opened up. And right here is where I am using if statements to call if we, if this instance does not have a game manager or it is equal to null we are going to add the player to the game manager and then run the start. Down here is my public void on destroy function where it will deregister with the game manager if we have one. I have also created a controller as a superclass script right here. I also made it serializable where my player controller inherits from this class. Right here. And on the player controller script, I just override the process inputs and set an on destroy function. For the pawn script I created, this is a superclass for my tank pawn script. And just on my pawn script, I have public variables and my virtual void start where we'll get our mover component. And I set up the functions with no parameters to be inherited and then manipulated on the inherited class. Looking at the tank pawn, this is how it inherits from, and it gets those two speed variables and the fire rate that was on the pawn script. And down here, I created some variables just for the tank pawn class. Looking back at my player controller script, you'll see the player input key codes are exposed, either public or serializable. Realizable here. 
And I tried to do this for most of my scripts where any game designer would need to edit anything to change how the game plays. To have movement, I utilized single purpose scripting where I created a tank mover component script that inherits from my mover script. This is the mover script up here. I have a public float turn speed and move speed. And my turn speed is a variable for the degrees we will rotate in a frame draw, where my move speed is going to be a public variable for move speed that is frame rate independent. Here I declared the two functions that the mover class should have. It should have move and rotate capabilities. Looking at the tank mover script, you'll see I utilized the multiplication of time dot delta time to ensure my values for move speed and rotation speed are time based and not frame rate dependent. You'll see that here. And here. I also kept all of my tank related components accessible from my tank pawn component. Looking at that one more time, so everything's public here. Since tank pawn inherits from the pawn class that holds our three variables, on the tank pawn script itself, I hold my public game object variable called bullet and a public transform linked to my firepoint on the tank prefab, which I'll show later. My movement variables are exposed to designers. Let's look at my prefabs folder to see that. Go to prefabs a tank and you'll see under the tank pawn you can adjust the move speed turn speed and fire rate for the shells you can set what you want the mover to be what you want to fire out of the tank in this case it is a shell and what the fire point is on the tank itself I also added a sphere collider, rigid body, the tank mover script, and my tank health script. Beyond the scope of the rubric, looking at my shell prefab right here, you can see that I also left important variables. Sorry about that. Looking back at my shell explosion script over here, I created this script and I left all the important variables exposed for other designers to manipulate as they feel needed. Let's take a quick look at my shell explosion script. Right over here, I created some public variables that I used only in this script and this was actually pretty neat so this allows me to only affect what is on a specific layer in the game in this case i use the players layer as well anything with the rigid body component and on start right here i ensure the object is not in the scene by destroying it Next, I created an on trigger enter collider other that uses a list to check all colliders within an overlap sphere using a designated tank mask. Awesome. And with the rigid body component. If the collider meets these requirements, if statement, then it will damage the target, play an audio right over here, and then destroy itself. Right, and now I'll give a little demonstration of my uh, 
game manager and player spawn. Letting it load up here. All right, so we're the purple one. And when you right click, you can fire and damage these other tanks and they will explode when their health is equal to zero or less than. And you could shoot these ducks around. Movement. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching.